Welcome back, viewers. Welcome back to Scoreboard here on Acts 25. And my guest uh, for tonight is Mr. Anton Cornell. Uh, Mr. Cornell is the current technical director of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Federation, uh, a former coach of the National Under-17 team that went to the 2007 World Cup. Also, he also holds a whole certificate in a Bachelor of Science and Physical Education, also an A license in the US and Germany. Right, correct. Right. Mr. Cornell, it's a pleasure. It's an interview long over you. Thank well, you. Nevertheless, I'm glad to it's be a here. pleasure to be to have yeah. you here with us this morning. Glad to be here. Before we get into the meat of the interview, um, tell us briefly who is Anton Cornell? Hmm. Um, a lot of people say I've been following my father's footsteps. Mm -hmm but I've been born into the game as a player and then as a coach. And I think my dream as a player, I played for Toronto and Tobago a couple of times and played professionally here in the Caribbean where we, there was a Caribbean professional league. But I was very fascinating, fascinated in coaching. And we, of course, you know, we've got a coaching school yes. and as part of coaching in the coaching school from a very young age and wanted to give back. We had a lot of kids coming through that school and I decided to let coaching become a profession. Because of that, I decided to, my pathway of study was a Bachelor of Science in Physical Education, which would give you a, a good base mm -hmm. for what you do and why you do it. Um, it. It gives you the base of the science of the game. And I thought that would have been useful one day and it, it did come to pass. And I started to coach and get myself educated in the game of coaching. Um, I think that's my, my main trust is to be able to give back right now to the young people, to give back to fellow coaches. I've been very fortunate to have worked with a lot of experienced coaches and that information needs to be shared. And this is one way of me sharing it um, because of my job, my job specs. And I think it's important for me to not be selfish about sharing that information. Yes. Uh, I've been very open to all coaches, anybody that approaches me about the game, um, ways that will enhance the game in this country. And it's important for me to be upfront, very upfront with our people, with the people we deal with, with the young people we deal with, and what's some of the best ways we can do to help our country. Okay. Now, that was the easy part of the interview. Now comes the hard part. Mm -hmm. You have been given the opportunity to be the technical director of football in Trent Tobago at a time where football is at its lowest. Mm -hmm. um, your responsibility is to implement programs and policies that will see the upliftment or the revive of the game from where uh, it was once. How difficult is your job presently? It's a difficult job only because of uh, a lack of support and funding. Um, the actual programs have the strategic plan has been done. The direction that we'd like to go, it's in place. But it, it's impossible to have these programs in place without support. And I'm just talking about general financial support. We've got the zones, they all have their zonal programs. We've got our development programs in each zone, which is the elite program. It was the Centers of Excellence. Now it's the NDPs, which is the National Development Program. We've got our youth teams in place, the 17s, who have now qualified for the CONCACAF level yes, in April. Yeah. We have the 20s that are now, the U20s that are now yeah. in, they should be leaving tomorrow um, to go to Jamaica and hopefully qualify for the CONCACAF level. We've got the start of a U15 team where some of the zones are actually screening. Mm -hmm. At this time, we had a letter going out to the zones. But it takes personnel, it takes people out there. And in this day and age, we're in a, a world where these coaches are now professionals. So we have to have some type of funding, whether it's just a stipend. And if that's not given, then we have to depend on volunteers only. And a volunteer means when he has or she has time. time. So that's where it comes in, where we need that possible support. In saying that, we've done a, a coach education program to help our coaches, to help educate our coaches, to give our coaches the opportunity to get information 
that's given all over the world and pass it on to our young players. We've had a, a series of courses last year and this year to help um, with sea license coaches. Mm -hmm. We had the KNVB coming into Trinidad and Tobago and we, we're passing that information on to the coaches. If 250 coaches go out there and pass it on to 20 people, yes. then we have a lot of people gaining from that experience. So that's in place right now. We've had a couple of C prep license for new coaches that are starting to get themselves involved in the game. Um, that's in preparation for their C license. And then we'll have a possible B license this year in December, middle December, for the successful candidates of the C license. And again, that's to help. So we're hoping that that's one way of us getting the information out there. Does it happen? Do we see success overnight? It's impossible. That information is now being given. And we have to wait till those coaches go out. We see a different type player. There's even a different type approach, how we present the game to young players. It's, it, the presentation of the game is not one directional anymore. It's two. We allow the players to be able to use their imagination, use their creativity. We must not stifle them. Um, we let them solve some problems in the game. Actually, they're the ones solving the problems in the field. So we want them to start solving problems in practice sessions. Okay. And we just show them ways that we can structure the session that they're able now to solve the problems. If that starts at U13, when we get to a U18 player, he doesn't have to look to the bench anymore. Yes, he has he been can. in that yes, situation yes, yes. enough times. A more of a leadership role on the That's field. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. You know, we have <clears throat> it's been said that you have to help those players coach each other, which is helpful. Mm. We need for them to take <clears throat> a lion's share of the responsibility, but we must guide them and we must educate them. And I think that's appro that approach is a little bit different and it's one that hopefully will bear fruit. Um, I have been involved, as you said, with the U17 program, and I think we did that a little bit at when they were U14, where we allowed players to express themselves. Um, we allow them to take chances. We allow them, we actually take a risk on the field, and we have seen relative success as the years went by. Those players are now 22, 23, and we are seeing some of those players blossoming right now. One of our main problems is not every, every, sometimes we want an instant result. There's yeah. nothing like an instant result. It takes time. And um, we have to make sure that when we plant that seed, the most important part is the first couple of years, that the foundation is right, the attitude is right, the discipline and commitment is right. And those players can also see a pathway that they can follow. If there's no vision to see forward, then there's no direction. Yeah. And um, hopefully we will see better results in a few years.